Welcome to our sessions and discussion about the sensitive ground fault detection methods. We discussed about the basics, overall information in two, three sessions. And we discussed uh, some of the methods. In the first method that we discussed, we had uh, eight sessions about it to three I zero stage with cosine of this phi, the angle between zero sequence voltage and zero sequence current, or selecting the sine of this angle uh, by this method. And we had uh, six sessions about the transient ground fault uh, detection, directional transient ground fault. Uh, we had uh, on the third session, we had uh, about uh, four sessions about um, the a three I zero stage with uh, the angle between voltage and uh, using angle be between voltage and uh, zero se sequence current, this angle, using just this angle and shifting the uh, reference voltage by uh, 45 to plus 90, minus 45 minus 90 to plus 90 according to the system. And in the previous session, we discussed, we started our discussion about the fourth method, the directional uh, method with the zero sequence admittance uh, threshold of the system. In this system, we discussed that we, sometimes we use the G0, it means the conductance part of the zero sequence admittance, uh, or the uh, susceptance part of the zero sequence admittance for determining the direction. In previous session, we discussed that what uh, zero sequence, uh, sequence admittance of the system is and how it is determined. Here we discussed whatever. And today we are going to discuss that we, which uh, uh, measuring method we should use for the direction determination and for our pickup. Whether to use the susceptance uh, part or the conductance part of the zero sequence admittance. Our V0, the real axis is this axis that we have. And uh, another axis is the imaginary axis is here. If our zero sequence admittance take part in this area, then uh, we know that the majority, we, uh, we should divide it into its components, the uh, vertical component and horizontal components on the axis. We know that uh, if the zero sequence admittance of the system take part in this area mostly, uh, um, which is the majority of the zero sequence admittance will be on our real axis and this part that is the uh, Y zero, we call it as direction. And uh, this is used for direction determination in the system which the majority of the current is resistive in part. We know that uh, the majority of the current, the resistive part is in the system which is uh, coil grounded systems. In the coil grounded systems, the uh, capacitive current and the inductive current uh, try to neutralize each other and the remaining part of the current is the resistive part of the current, uh, the IR, of our system that is decisive for the fault. We can determine the characteristics of this fault by I0, uh, the current which is mostly resistive in nature. And as the current is resistive, we know that the current divided by voltage is admittance of the system. Similarly for zero sequence uh, admittance also, I0 and V0 is decisive for finding the uh, Y0 or the admittance, zero sequence admittance of the system. Now, uh, we should select, or we know that uh, the majority of the current which is decisive for the fault is on the axis, the real axis. Now we should select our symmetrical axis uh, such that this part of the uh, zero sequence admittance be perpendicular to our symmetrical axis. And that axis is the horizontal axis, and we do not tilt it, we do not shift it, we do not rotate, because our uh, decisive part of zero sequence admittance is uh, 
perpendicular to the horizontal axis. So we select this angle of uh, phi correction as a zero. And uh, we select the G0 or the uh, conductance part of the zero sequence admittance as a measuring method because uh, we need uh, this part is decisive. So this part is uh, nothing but it is G0. This is G0 axis. And this part is the G0 of Y0. Now the question is that uh, how much we should give uh, this uh, a threshold value for the G0 that beyond of this value, for example, beyond of this value, greater than this value, our system will trip and lower than this value, it will not trip in the negative side also. Uh, if uh, it goes beyond the negative uh, value, uh, be beyond the negative set value, then uh, our system should uh, trip as a backward uh, and if it goes beyond the positive threshold, this is the positive threshold, if it goes beyond more than, than this uh, th threshold, th our system will trip. And how much we should select this? It means uh, we should uh, try to find the amount of selection that the polarizing G0 or B0 threshold, but how uh, how much milli Siemens it should be with uh, the uh, admittance of the system uh, the unit of admittance, uh, admittance of the system is Siemens or Mu, inverse of the uh, ohm, which is for the uh, in impedance of the system. Now let's try to find how, uh, how much we should give this value of the P G0 threshold, because we selected the method of G, so here that G0 threshold we should give. Uh, how much we should select in the system, which is uh, uh, inductive uh, grounded or it's coil grounded. Here it is. If uh, we have a system which is coil grounded or it's uh, just grounded, uh, so we use this formula for finding this uh, G0 because in this type of the system we use G0 as a decisive part and the measuring method. And uh, here, uh, G0, we know that is the conductance part. The threshold should be greater than KSI0 active divided by root 3 v, uh, v rated value plus I0 minimum divided by uh, V0 threshold. Here, the, in this formula, the K is uh, the, thresh, the safety margin. This is safety margin. We give it uh, 1.5 or uh, 2. It is uh, 1.5 for the underground cables and 2 for overhead lines. And V rated is the secondary rated voltage during normal healthy case. It's mostly uh, 100 or 110 volts. And uh, uh, V0 threshold, that is the V0 threshold value, which this value is uh, root 3 V rated, which we discussed, what is V rated? That is not normal voltage uh, in the, during the normal condition, the secondary voltage, multiplied by uh, 0.1. That is uh, the V0 threshold. Uh, we should remember this value that for the system, which is coil grounded system in this type of the system, we use a V0 threshold as, uh, we can find V0 threshold at 0 0.1 into row 3 V rated. And if our system is, mm, our uh, grounding system has one uh, parallel resistor uh, into that uh, coil grounded in arc suppression coil system, if we have uh, one resistor here, parallel to this coil. In this type of the system, uh, we use a current a CT, and the current which flows here, we call it as IR, uh, I dash RP. That is the current flowing into the parallel resistor of arc suppression coil. 
And the secondary current, uh, we call it as, that one was I dash RP, and we call it as the current which is flowing in the secondary uh, of the current transformer and installed on the uh, uh, resistor parallel to the coil grounded system or arc suppression coil. We call it as IRP. This is the current flowing in the secondary side. Uh, on that, in this type of the system, if our configuration is like this, so uh, we sh uh, should take care that our G0 should be less than one by Ks, that the value of Ks we have explained before. Uh, IRP, that is the current and secondary side of the uh, uh, parallel resistor, and we divide by root uh, three into V rated. This one was on explanation about the system which is arc suppression coil grounded system uh, or arc suppression coil grounded system with parallel resistor uh, that we should take care about uh, the selecting the which method we should select. That is, we said that we select G0 and how much should be uh, the value or the threshold value of uh, this G0 we can find from this formula, if we have parallel resistor, we should take care that our G0 should be lower than this value. In the second session, uh, in the uh, next session, uh, we will discuss about uh, a system which is resistive grounded or a isolated system, how, which method we should select, and uh, what should be the formula for finding G0 or the B0. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and help us provide you more free educational tutorials.